Hey everyone, and welcome to my reading manga wrap up. It is the sixth month, and I was supposed to do one of these every single month, so we have a lot to cover. Not as much as my goal to read, but I do have a lot of titles and a lot of five stars, so I'm really enjoying what I'm reading this year so far. The titles in front of me are titles that I decided to put on the back burner, not for reasons that most people put titles on the back burner, but it's just I want to get more volumes or complete the series and then just binge it when I actually have time when I'm not reading other things because I don't know, but I guess I'm just slow and I can't read like most people do when the volume comes in because I forget and I can't follow along. Also, the Something's Wrong With Us, I just wasn't in the mood to read it at the time because I think it was a series that you need to binge and I literally couldn't even finish a chapter before I had to go into one job to the other and it just was kind of a mess. I just didn't have time for it. So I definitely want to dedicate more time to that. Audrey and I got to volume four. I am really enjoying it. Um, by the time that I get to jump back into it with, especially with what I'm reading this month, I will have already, my brain, my brain small, would have already forgotten all the information. So I just decided that I was just going to start that over again once I just buy all the volumes or however many are going to come out. I think it's still ongoing. But, um, and then with Blue Period, I enjoyed the first volume. Not as much as everyone else's, sadly, but I am still enjoying it. So, I mean, I can't complain. I definitely want to continue it. I have volume two. I'm going to get volume three shortly, but I need to find out how many volumes are going to be in Blue Period, if it's still going on in Japan. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you do know, uh, but I think I'm just going to finish that one and just stop from the beginning and read it all the way through, pretty much with all of these. Um, but yeah, so... Anyways, I just wanted to point out that I have been reading these titles, but I'm just kind of putting them on the back burner, not because they're bad in any way at all. I'm enjoying them. It's just I either don't have time or I get confused from volume to volume because I'm not smart like everyone else. But anyways, I guess how I'm going to do this is just kind of go by uh, star rating and yeah, let's get started. And lucky for me, I had zero one star rating. These two are two star ratings. Uh, both were not bad, just let's start with as a Mongo Dio. It was funny that the Mongo Hoarder recommended that I watch the anime first and then read the manga. And she said that she would never recommend that, but with this one, and what did I do? I read the manga first, um, at least the first, I think like six chapters. They're very short chapters. It's a four coma manga. And um, it was funny. I was kind of bored out of my mind. I couldn't see binging this series at all. Um, I don't know. I I'm just reading so many other titles that this just didn't really interest me at all. Um, so I decided to DNF it and um, not finish it. Um, it's definitely been in my collection since the very first haul on my channel. I do believe five years ago, it was actually in a readathon that I did with uh, Just a Freak. So yeah, to uh, to kind of get the fr like kind of get your oldest titles um, off your TBR, and yeah, so this one IDNF says off. Um, it's just uh, about high school life, and it's a slice of life, really slow paced, which. I like Slice of Life slow paced if it has like supernatural elements, stuff like that, but this one just ain't. Um, but yeah, moving on to Glass Wings. This one is a supernatural short story collection, um, and it just kind of seemed like it did not, none of the stories had a good conclusion. They were kind of all rushed. There was a lot of uh, just, I feel like nothing was scary, um, it was just like short stories put together and it just didn't really do much for me. 
the art, I really like the art, the art's nice, um, yeah, so anyways, yeah, so I mean, I'm not really disappointed that I got them at all, so I guess that's a win, but yeah, anyways, let's go to the three stars. Okay, and for my three star reads, I read Orange by Benjamin. Let's just say that this artist is a China, uh, forgot the name of, it's not manga or manhwa, it is, I forgot the name of it, but it is Chinese comics and oh my god, I am buying everything by this artist. The art is so freaking gorgeous. I absolutely love him. There, um, I looked up and there are more titles. I have one other title by him that I'll show off here in a second, but unfortunately this story just didn't do it for me. It is about this high school girl and um, she kind of pushes guys away. She's kind of a tease. She's just kind of, oh, I'm big and bad. I want to rebel. Uh, teenage, which is completely right up my alley, but this is just was kind of like, I've seen everything before uh, type deal. And I don't know, it just wasn't, just well, didn't like it. Um, <laughs> But I honestly would probably give this a two star, but I will give it a, another star just for the artwork. It, I am not disappointed that I got this at all. Um, just going through it and staring at the art is just breathtaking. Let me see if I can show you anymore. But yeah, definitely will be picking more up by Benjamin. This is a conclusion I started this series in last wrap up that I will link down below, Kizuna. And this one was such a interesting ride. Starting off at the beginning, I absolutely hated it. There was a lot of first full stuff in it. There's a lot of rape, there's um, gangs, and then I think, I do believe it, I was about to DNF the series. I was done. It's 11 volume series. Um, this one right here is a tune one. And I was about to DNF it around volume three and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna give it another. But I think volume three is when at the end of it, it kind of like intrigued me enough to go on, but barely. And then volume four got me so hooked and invested. And then through the middle of it, I was just all there for it. And then just completely enthralled in the characters. And then by the end, I kind of was out of the story. I kind of already knew what was about to happen. It was, you know, obvious, like what was gonna go down. And I don't know, so that's why it got a three stars from a very, very awful beginning, maybe even one star, to a very like four star middle, to like a eh, three star, two star-ish ending. But um, overall, I, I guess I wouldn't really recommend this, so this might be a two star, I don't know. I enjoyed it for what it is. I'm glad I read it. Um, it's been sitting on my shelf for a while. It is pretty much about these two, guys that met in high school and when they graduate they finally get together and then it's also about their one of the dude's brothers and then his love interest that's actually his bodyguard because they're in a gang and just all their soap opera shenanigans and there's a lot of like murder and you know, fighting and yeah it's a mess it is complete trash and a mess and if that's your thing then go for it um i do believe that these june ones may go to print soon so definitely definitely get them when you can <laughs> but um i think there yeah there's six june volumes all together so um yeah anyways yeah so that is my conclusion for that one 
Next up is Tropic of the Sea. Oh my God, this was so, so disappointing. I was expecting Opus. I absolutely love, 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 love Opus. And by Satoshi Khan. And it just, this was just okay. It's about a village protecting a mermaid egg and how people want to get that mermaid egg and how they kind of lost the mermaid egg so then the mermaid went um, kind of destroyed, took the water, destroyed everything. Um, it, it wasn't bad. I didn't I did not regret reading it at all. Um, the artwork is good, definitely. I actually read this for, finally got it out of the way for a Mer May challenge by, uh, who was it? Maeve Ever Reading and Laura. I will actually link both their channels down below. So go check them out. I think it's Laura Grace. Um, I apologize, but yeah, both really enjoy the videos. So go look them up. Um, but yeah, anyways, it was, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, it took me a while to read it because it was kind of slow and boring and yeah, so that is why I got three stars, but I am glad that it's in my collection. Next up is my four stars, Beauty and the Beast, Belle's Tale, and Beauty and the Beast, The Beast Tale. It is a perspective of um, bells and then a perspective of the beast in one vol in a volume each. And yeah, it was a really enjoyable retelling of the story. It kind of really followed along. There was just a little bit of added material, like behind the scenes stuff that you didn't see in the original movie or the live action movie. But it, overall, it was really good. It was like done in like a shoujo style. And yeah, I just really enjoyed it. So I gave it four stars and I'm glad I finally read it. And everyone knows what Beauty and the Beast is, so I don't really have to explain the story. <laughs> this one is what I wanted Blast Wings to be. It is short stories that are horror, that are actually scary, and they actually have good conclusions. Let's see if it says the different stories on the back. No. Okay, there's, there's the offering, the funeral, the fall. Tale of the White Knight. Yeah, they are all really good short stories that really scared me that I read in the dark at my job and made it even more scarier. And I'm really glad that I picked it up. Solid four stars. Um, I need to look up and see if this mangaka made any more titles that I need to pick up, but yeah. It is an old empire, so I'm not sure if I can find any print. Next up, this one, even though it's a four star, it was quite disappointing as Setona Mizoshiro is my favorite mangaka of all time and I am slowly reading all of her works. I will actually be done with all of her works in English at the end of this month. So in my next wrap up, I'll wrap up her last title and I actually have another title by her in here um, to review. That's actually got five stars. That's why it's a little bit disappointing because this is the lowest rated work by her. It is about vampires and let's just say a lot of her characters remind me of each other in different, in all of her manga. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it kind of is kind of trippy and kind of reminds me of Clamp in a way. But um, yeah, it's pretty much about this, this vampire right here that vampires have an expiration and they have to eventually mate so they can have 
children, I guess, is how you would say it. And if they don't, then they're going to die once they, it's kind of like a tattoo. Once the tattoo is all filled in on the back of the neck, they die. And so they have to, the whole top point of vampires is to bear children and then they die. So this guy right here is really manipulative and manipulates his way into this family. And they have a young girl. And when she's a little bit older, he actually rapes her. And then she dies, but somehow he saves her corpse, kind of like as a vessel. And he is taken away by this teacher, the school teacher, and he actually kills her and puts her spirit in her body so his kind of first loves in a sick twisted morbid disgusting way um, body and then she actually agrees to pick which vampire she's going to have sex with in order to pretty much keep their legacy alive I guess is what you would say and um, she has uh, four options and uh, let's just say best boy dies, sadly, and the guy on the cover is a douche, and he kind of, he really reminds me of a, another character from another series by her, After School Nightmare, and he's also a douche too, he's not a vampire, so I'm kind of making it think like maybe like, because he's supernatural, maybe he became a vampire afterwards, I don't know, I'm really weird, but anyways, um, yeah, so this was r really, really interesting read. Um, it was really, really creepy with all the bugs. I really enjoyed the story. I just didn't love it, love it. I just really liked it. So that's why I gave it a four stars. All of her other works so far that I've read, yeah, that's in English, is a solid five. And I absolutely love all of them. Um, but yeah, anyways, so that's why it's just a little bit disappointing that it's not A5, but you know, it's still a really good read. It's still a really good Jose Shoujo title, and I highly recommend picking it up if you can, and especially if you like vampires, because it definitely does a different twist on vampires. I would say I think that the reason why it took me a little bit out of the story was because even though she does a lot of supernatural like type horror stuff my favorite part is her psychological spin on all of it and in this one it didn't really have a psychological spin like it did but it wasn't as strong and it wasn't really i guess the main plot and i feel like the other series by her it kind of like really messed with your emotions and got you so like just crushed by the characters and this just this just didn't really do it for me um but yeah anyways highly recommend it is still a four star it is great i'm so glad it's in my collection and i absolutely love her and just so many five star reads this month and starting off with X Day, I keep wanting to say X Days, but that wouldn't make any sense as it is just them all waiting for that one particular day. This is by the same mangaka as Black Rose Alice that I just talked about. And wow, this one definitely, definitely, definitely tugs at your emotions and it is so tragic and sad. It is about this girl named Ruki, Ruko, and she just got dumped by her boyfriend. She's stressed about exams, just normal high school stuff. But of course, we all know when you're in high school, things are a lot more awful and more dramatic than if they happened when you're out of high school and you're just like, oh, well, that's just life because life sucks. But um, you kind of don't really accept that in high school. And so she goes online and meets up with 
other people that are going through a lot, whether it's um, abuse at home or other issues, and they all start talking and they plan for a X day, they're going to blow up the school. And it is just so bizarre and wild and they use flip phones which is hilarious and it never really has a conclusion um it just pretty much you just get to see a little bit into each of these characters lives and how they connect and yeah it is just a wonderful time also at the end of the last volume volume two you have a short story by her called The Last Supper. And it is a, about this cow and this human boy that definitely have <laughs> um, more stronger feelings for each other than friendship. And let's just say this does not disappoint in the tragic, sad department as um, his whole entire family gets eaten and they get separated and it is just so freaking sad and I also gave this five stars. And next up is Tokyo Babylon. This is published by Tokyo Pop, so it is majorly out of print. It is seven volumes long, but you can also try to find it by Dark Horse which is even more out of print and it's a, I believe it is a two, they put it into two omnibuses, but I do highly recommend this title if you can get your hands on it. I would probably go the singles, but with the new anime that they announced, I do believe that Kodansha has the rights and will be putting this out in a beautiful collector's edition as they have been with other clamp titles. So fingers crossed and please hear, please hear me Kodansha and give this a awesome new reprint and I will definitely be picking it up. And yeah, anyways, this is, this has been sitting on my shelf for a very long time since my first haul. I do believe I finished all seven volumes and I cannot believe I haven't read it as it is a before my favorite anime and manga x slash and it takes place before and it has some of the same characters it is about this boy right here and his twin sister his name is shaburo shaburo and his twin sister and they both have powers he has stronger powers than she does and he they kind of help spirits go on to the afterlife that are stuck here. And it is a supernatural tale. It definitely checks all the boxes of a plot, but like in a plot throughout the whole entire seven volumes. And then it is little short little like mystery thriller stories throughout and it is just so dark interested and there he has a love interest that is a guy and let's just say that this series is absolutely tragic and i guess i can show you the artwork inside but each each uh, volume has like a centerfold and in the last seventh volume it gives away a major plot spoiler that <laughs> uh, in the centerfold it pretty much gives it away but in a very unique way so if you get the singles um, definitely look that up or look it up online. <laughs> um, I literally looked at this and um, in the seventh volume and absolutely cried. I love the color schemes. I should have brought the other volumes, but they're each like, one's a white background with like him dressed in white, one's pink, one's I believe orange. Uh, very pretty 
uh, covers and um, yeah. I just really highly recommend this. I cannot believe it took me so long to read it. Um, if you like any, if your thing is supernatural, definitely pick this up. It is tragic and sad as F. Don't let this cute cover fool you. This is a one shot by the old Tokyo Pop. And if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. I pretty much picked this up mainly because one, it was on sale for three dollars. Uh, two, it was by a manga artist that I have another title by, but I haven't read it, so I don't know why that would be an excuse. Three, I wanted more Magical Girl in my collection, so I decided with this one shot it would just be perfect. So, pretty much three reasons why you shouldn't buy manga. Um, I fell for all three of them, <laughs> but anyways, I definitely, this was definitely a hidden treasure for sure. It was so good. It had comedy elements, it had mystery, it had drama, it had romance, it had trage tragedy, it is dark as F, and I am here for it. It definitely, definitely gave me Yona of the Dawn vibes. So if um, many, many, many fans would absolutely love this title, it is pretty much about this chick that is a magic girl that can spread love, but is it true love? It is pretty much about her bodyguard and her not being able to be in love and it's just so sweet, so good, and it definitely has a really sad and tragic but good conclusion as one shot sometimes. Um, you can't finish the story, but just so much goes on in this. I was so surprised and so thrilled that I discovered such a cheap <laughs> treasure that I didn't think, that I thought that would be sitting on my shelf forever. I just, it was kind of sitting next to me when I, needed to read with one of my friends because we FaceTime and um, I was just like okay it's a one shot I don't have to start anything new and it's sitting next to me I don't have to go downstairs and wake up the dogs and yeah so that is why I read this and five stars I definitely definitely was like okay I'm giving so much five stars did I really enjoy it that much and I let it sit with me for a couple days and I'm like yes I'm still thinking about this story and I'm, I'm just, it's just great. I just love it. So it's definitely still five stars. And yeah, I highly recommend it. Mermaid Scars, Mermaid First, and Mermaid Gaze. I forgot which one comes first, but this was published, republished again in a two omnibus, all the volumes in the two omnibuses. So definitely go check it out. It's called Mermaid Saga. And wow, <laughs> when I first started reading this, uh, it took me a little bit of time to get into the artwork as it definitely was different. And don't hate me, but this manga's art, I've always just kind of stared away from. Like in Rama Run Half. Um, yeah. And by the end of the series, I really enjoyed this manga because artwork it gives me clamp vibes <laughs> um this whole entire story gives me clamp vibes a lot like tokyo babylon it has a supernatural overall plot but then it has short stories supernatural stories within it it is pretty much about these two people eat mermaid flesh and they gain immortality and live forever. The only issue is, is they decide that they don't want to. So they're trying to take back the, the curse, <laughs> you would say. And a lot of people say that they like the beginning of this and then the ending is um, weaker for them. But um, I kind of 
I kind of have to argue that just me personally because I really enjoyed this last story. I can definitely see where they would say that because it has nothing to do with the ocean or mermaids. It's a it's about them living forever and another character eating mermaid flesh and them solving like a supernatural mystery that has nothing to do with the sea so it kind of um, is a different setting um, even though I do think it would have been better if it had another story afterwards of kind of tying it all together back at the sea that would be kind of neat but um, as I was reading this I was I didn't think I was going to enjoy it as much as I did and as I continued it I just got so invested and so obsessed with all this dark mystery and plot that these two people go on and them meeting other people that are trying to eat mermaids and if you if you are not the right type of person you will turn into a monster yourself if you eat the mermaid and it's just really creepy tales and it's just so 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 good um I think I yeah I honestly think my favorite would be um Mermaid's Gaze which is the last one I wasn't going to get the new omnibuses but I definitely definitely want to get them now as um I think it would be easier to kind of read the story as it's not so all over the place with these um three volumes that tells you what order they go into except like these are just all kind of separate individual stories but um overall a really solid five and I really really enjoyed it <laughs> last but not least remember by Benjamin like I said before with orange I am kind of glad that I read orange first as it didn't blow me away and so if I read this one first and then went to Orange, I would have been really disappointed. But instead, I wasn't blown away. And then I read this one and both of them, I'm blown away with the artwork. They are, are stunning. But this story in particular was amazing to me. I absolutely loved it so much. It is about this manga artist that kind of has to fight with the publisher and fight with what people want. He kind of has to decide if he's going to write like personal experiences, write what he wants to write about, write what he's feeling even if it's morbid and twisted and not what the reader wants and not what the publishers are looking for. He kind of has to decide whether he's going to make like money and just kind of go with society what they want to see or if he's going to be true to himself and yeah it was just so so good and on top of that you get a bonus story it's like two stories in one and this one was called let me find it and the artwork in here looks like completely it's called That Year, That Summer, Password Memories. And the artwork in here is just, wow. I absolutely love this story. It's pretty much about stoners and college and life and it's tragedy and just, just love it so much. I highly recommend this one. I recommend all of their works. I only read, you know, three now, but this for the artwork, if you just want to get like, it's just for like an art book, but I highly recommend to remember, but thank you so much for watching this wrap up. Sorry, it's been taking me so long. Hopefully I get them up monthly or even every other month, but as this is a lot of titles, but um, really hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you're reading down below. Let me know if you've read any of these titles or if you're interested and want me to tell you any more about them as I tried to kind of go quicker since there were so many. But yeah, um, thank you so much for watching and see you next video.